cheer, cheer. Rap Grid Radio. It's your boy Funkmaster Wavy and I, ni- niggas. Yeah. What up, Sonny? What the up, worst world? intros on the planet. Earth. Yeah, that was. That yeah, was no, strange. I tried to do something, suck. and then strange. I did something else, and then th- yeah, you fucked that all the bitches. way up. Anyway, what up, world? Rap Grid Radio. Sonny Bam, direct special guest. Introduce yourself, Mike G. And now I know Nino Bless. Yes, sir. Ooh. The one and, and Nino only. Bless on Twitter. You already know. Nino, now. definitely, I would say, uh, one of the, if not the most um, uh, well-known you know, artists musically that we've had so far on. Would you agree, Direct? Dope. Yeah, Nino is um, the dude, man. Because we obviously have done a lot of battle rappers and stuff, and you know, some have are further along musically than others, but Nino is obviously in a whole different you know, realm. Respect. Um, so the, the main thing, would you say that, people that listen to this at least are know you for is probably the slaughterhouse connection absolutely not no no, no what no. would you say that people that listen to no, the rap- slaughterhouse. oh <laughs> wait, wait, wait. you have me i was like what i was like you do some daylight shit i was like you boo-boo on stage or something i didn't know about yeah i would i would say it's the slaughterhouse song i mean uh the what got me the slaughterhouse song was a a joint i did called four in the clip which was really big like when the blogs first started popping that was me g rap cool g rap Joel Ortiz and Styles P. Mm. Then I did a song called Third Degree with uh, Saigon, Crooked Eye, and Scram Jones. Shout out to all these brothers that I'm naming. And then I did a song called Times Are Hard with Joe Budden, which his following kind of caught on to me and started checking those joints out. And then Slaughterhouse came a little bit later. Mm. So, But yeah, Slaughterhouse hit the net and it was big and shit. I'm sure we'll get to that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah where, does, where does the Nino Bless story begin? When you were little Nino Ninito... And coming out, you know the Nino. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my, like, my, yeah, my dad, Nino. my dad's name is Hector. I'm Hector Junior. And then everybody just like, which Hector you talking about? And Nino, and Nino. So that's how the Nino stuck. Uh, stuck. And then the blessing. So it's was, without the Enye. It's Nino yeah, without yeah, the no Enye. Accent mark. Yeah, Ooh. I dropped that because I'm. I was born till in. Ra- day. Yeah, till I was day. born and raised in Brooklyn, so it's like I'm a New Yorkerian. So it's like you know, mm-hmm. no accent marks here. Then the Bless was just my tag name. People used to just call me Bless, and then. I had a bunch of shitty ass rap names, you know what I mean, and I was like, I, that don't work for me. And then I just stuck let's hear a couple. Nino let's hear a couple. My of first those. rap name, and I, I, I'm actually proud of this because I, <laughs> whatever. But I want to hit it so bad. Yeah, you want to hear it? You yes. sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing tops Jaron Benton's, but we'll get to that. Go ahead. Nah, Jaron Benton is a cool name. No, Nessa, no, 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 no. His necessary. first one. His uh, first shout name. Shout out to my man Nestle. He, he makes me feel good about this story. His first rap name was Necessary, mm. and I think that. Yeah, and it was so unnecessary. And uh, <laughs> N- 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 no, nah, Got that's him. my man. And uh, yeah, but my first rap name, well, I had a bunch of them, but the one that I was uh, pursuing was Question. Was what? Question. Like, not, not a question, question, but a question. Nah. Oh, I was Q U S T apostrophe H O N N W N. Hold on. Here's how bad it was. Here's how bad it was. I went by Question, and then one of my mans, that rest in peace, Um, uh, my man, 38 Special. Um, he was from uh, Star City in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and he he did this song. He was like, "Fuck y'all yeah, who don't rhyme, question." Like he did a hook, and he was saying my name like that. Mm-hmm. He was like, "That's how you should do it." And I looked up to him, so I was like, <laughs> "Okay." And it was so horrible. Question. And um, how long did like you go by question? I went, by that. I went by that. If you look at Immortal Techniques, <laughs> if you look at Immortal Techniques, <laughs> Revolutionary <laughs> Volume Two, he mm-hmm. he, I'm like one of the first shout outs and he says question shut and, the fuck yeah, up I'm yo we got to we have i'm immediately googling uh, that. diabolic technique pen they've all shot me out on songs this was like 10 years ago when i was a kid how do you man. spell that question it was so hard but we did a dvd called this file play dvd and please let's end this conversation <laughs> um shot stimuli before he popped saigon mm-hmm. before he popped uh, me question. Yo, later now, I'm back. Yo, question. What I'm up, proud bro? of this. Hey, hey, I'm proud of this. I'm in an acceptance stage of my life. Uh, <laughs> Immortal Technique was on there. Um, shit, it was a big deal. It was called the foul play. Fuck the industry mm. overkill. And the only reason I'm talking about this is because some fans have accepted. They see Rhyme of the Year. They like, yo, were you a question? Like, was that you, dog? Because I used to have that DVD. So like, that's why I'm shouting out all the hardcore Nino fans wow. who actually found out that I was that. But uh, yeah, you know what I mean. So the Nino Bless, I was just like, I wanted to be me. I want to be more me and like my music is more me now it's not me trying another day yeah, i feel like the ill thing i feel like the ill thing in rap to do right now is to have a first name and last name well n- yeah, not I'm just not that, that. Not, yeah not just that not to cut my bad but not just that the names look like fucking screen names 
Chance the Rapper, Tyler the Creator, uh, Mike Will Made It, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> these, na- these names come off like screen name-ish, and I think it's like, you know, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Um, and I was saying about Jaren earlier, obviously Jaren Benton is his government, but I was talking about his actual first rap name, which I believe, let me correct me, I always get it wrong, I always make up a new one because like, it sounds similar because it's so fucking hilarious. It, it was like, uh, it was, it was like... Volcano or some shit, bro. Apocalypse. 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 Well, yo, J. Cole used to go by Therapist. Therapist. What? You said who? J. Therapist? Cole's first oh, rap name was Jim Cole. Like no, 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 no. I was like, oh, Therapist. J. Cole's first rap name was Therapist. Wow. He met he met this producer kid elite that he works with on a cannabis farm. So like all I, I had Drake's first rap name too. I forgot what it was. So I was like, I think we all started corny. You know what I mean? Like I, I've been direct guys. since day one. You have? No, no oh, I was D-Money. That's because terrible. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> you want to know the terrible reason why? Why? It's because I used to watch Moesha, and this nigga Ray J. Is that a real explanation? That's, Didn't yes, we all? A real explanation. What the fuck? I used to watch Moesha, and this nigga Ray J was fucking mad bitches, and his name was like Darren or some shit on the show, and he'd be like, nah, call me D-Money, and bitches would be on his dick. You just, you and just I'd be like, my name begins with a D, D money. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then one day I realized what you're realizing now and yeah, I yeah. quickly made up a new name that yeah. meant nothing but I made me happy. It, it is what it is. You know, know what I'm know, saying? Whatever, it is what it is. Yes. And I'm, proud, I'm proud of my history. You know what I mean? Word, word. <clears throat> I'm proud of it. So you, uh, you obviously grew up in New York and a lot of the, those first big records that you were talking about are with a lot of the big New York names and yeah. so on and so forth. So, but you live in Florida now, correct? Yeah, yeah. Now, you told me recently you're going back to New York. Are you still yeah. planning on going back up there? Yeah, I want to go back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I know Your family's still up there, obviously. Yeah, my, most of my family's still out there. Like I want to say like my immediate family, 90% of them. But it's kind of funny because my career didn't pop till I moved to Florida. Like mm. it was the weirdest shit on on earth, and it was. But you I, had already done like a lot of those records you just talked about nah, before. Really, nah, a lot nah, of those nah, were done when you were already in Florida. Nino Bless was created like by default. I actually was like a mar- I was doing marketing. I, I worked with Chameleon, Moto Tech, Moto Technique, Kooji uh, Rap, Saigon Graph, and then I was just sharing my writing with these cats. And then all of a sudden, like Kooji Rap is like, yo, you need to rap. Fuck How this. old were you at this point? I mean, was this like when I you was were like in my you... young mid twenties? Really? I was like young so you, 20s. I was like that's, young it's it's funny you said because Jaron uh, bring him up again. Uh, is the same way. Him? Like he'll tell you he wasn't even that <laughs> super. Si- what is that? I'm joking. I'm <laughs> he wasn't even that serious <laughs> until he was like 25 plus. Yeah, like he, he he'll tell you he was fucking around. Like he was yeah. like, eh, was this whatever. Yeah. And his first project he even put out the self titled mixtape was he was like in his late 20s. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it kind of happened with me too. Like yeah. I'm a late bloomer. I consider myself a late bloomer. But like I also didn't have intentions to rap. Like I didn't want to rhyme. And then, like, I was around so many rappers. Like, me and Graf were, like, really good friends. And, like, Graf was, like, I was looking at what Graf was doing, and it was just, like, how the fuck is he doing this? You know what I mean? And then I started, like, implementing some of the things I learned from him and putting in my own shit. And then um, shout out to Graf, Philip Bernard. We're good friends. We made a lot of money together. And um, helping him, like, I actually helped him. Like, um, I used to do mixtape distribution. We traveled all around the East Coast, made a lot of money together. But, like, we would kick rhymes in the whip and all. He'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you pushing me? You need mm. to rap. You need a rhyme. And I'm like, okay, cool G rap telling me I need a rap. And then that's when I took it. And then when Slaughterhouse came about, I know we'll get to that, I'm sure. But Let's get to it now. Okay, well, when that song happened, um, I don't even think I was making music professionally for a year. So, like, that shit just kind of threw me off. Like, the, I had no, the the way the song went down is kind of funny. Joe Budden called my phone, like, at 3.30 in the morning, 4 in the morning, because he knew I'd be up. And he was just like, um, yo, I'm wrapping up this album, which I think was Halfway House. That's where Slaughterhouse is on. He's like, I'm wrapping this album. Uh, do you want to knock a verse out for it? So I'm like, yeah. You know, he knows I work quick. He knows how I get down. And then he's like, yo, you're doing that mixtape with Crooked Eye. He's like, you know, what's up with Crooked? Cool. And then Joel and Royce came about, like, maybe, like, the next day. He's like, yeah, I just want to add two dudes on it. And we, So there was no Slaughterhouse. It was just a bunch of guys in a mm-hmm. song, kind of, like, similar. I did Third Degree, like I said, with Saigon Scream, mm-hmm. Crooked. And then Four in the Clip with G-Rap, Joel, and, and Styles. So, like, I had already done these records already. So it wasn't like, I didn't think a group would form or anything. So it was kind of, it kind of threw me off guard how it hit the net and it was just like, oh, shit. And I was obviously the outcast of that situation. I don't mean Andre 3K or nothing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, in a sense, like, people were just like, what the fuck? Like, where did he come from? Like, he just came in too quick. And those guys had, like, similar stories. And I always compare it. This is the best comparison I could think of. Imagine Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 
Dominique Wilkins in a picture and then Russell Westbrook. And you're like, what the fuck is Russell Westbrook doing in here? You know what I mean? Like, it kind of like crazy. didn't make sense. Not even a year, you said. I wasn't you even doing music recording. professionally for a year. Damn. So, I damn near, I really, I feel like I want to, like, obviously I've heard it before, but I feel like after you said that, I want to listen to it, like, right now, just to be like, damn, that's you, not even a year deep. In, in my music. With, I the, with these, like, I damn near legendary the, kind of dudes. I hadn't even been in the studio prior to that for, like, four years. Mm. I wasn't recording. I was just writing like eight bars here. <laughs> now, how did you have the relationship with Joe to the point where he was, he reached out to you for that? Did well, you, had y'all known each other for a while? We knew each other, and then um, for in a clip, I wanted him on that song instead of uh, Joel. I wanted him on it, and then when the song hit the net, he was like, "I should have been on that." Blah, blah blah. Then we did "Times Are Hard," so I was always on his radar. You know what I mean? So, so like, were you? Did the fans think you was a member of Slaughterhouse, or were you actually a member for? Wasn't a it, of time? it was. They it still was think almost, I'm a member. And it was, <laughs> I mean, you almost like, were, right? I mean, wasn't it kind of like, yeah. see, I heard the story was two of them wanted you in there and two of them were like, nah, I'm How'd not How'd you hear that? Because I said it on a song. I don't know. <laughs> I, is that where I heard it? I said it on a song. Yeah, that, that's that, probably, that, that, that's that, funny. That. But yeah, uh, yeah, that, I mean, I don't even want to get to that part. But like, real, you know, realistically, I mean, let's just be honest here. Like, Russell Westbrook's not in the picture with Dominique Wilkins, Larry Bird and him. It just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So looking back, it's like, you know, if... Uh, I don't know if uh, P Peter Rosenberg and Angie Martinez and blah, 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 are all going to get in the whip and you're standing outside. You, they're going to be like, nah, Dave, you can't come in here. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, so, I'm that nigga, but yeah. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I will you know. say this. But I will say this. Joe wanted me in. Yeah. He really wanted me to be a part of it. So I will That's say that. So I have a lot of, a lot of people keep think Joe was against me. Never the case. So how did you get from that point to where you are right now? Graf asked me this a while ago. It was kind of weird because he was like, "Yo, that's crazy that with Slaughterhouse you were so raw. And like now nah, your shit is so much with Rhyme of the Year. Like to me, you're getting better. So he, it's not that I've improved as much as these guys haven't. It's just I've also been in it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of shit, man. A lot of just hard work. A lot of you know to to where I'm at now. Like I kind of feel like that was a blessing. And I mean, you supposed to say that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not Eminem. I'm not. It's a blessing. You know, <laughs> I'm supposed. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. There ain't no blessing. This dude is just, you know, butthurt about it. But nah, it's it's worked out for me, man. Like I, I I've done a lot of music. I'm on Pepsi commercials, making music for that, for TV, for film. Um, I'm making money for fucking on shit that I'm not even. How should I say? I never thought I would make a song for Pepsi. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd be. I, I can't name some of the films right now. But some of them are, shout out to DreamWorks. I'm a part of some DreamWorks stuff and all that. So, um, Yeah, just based off the little that I know about, you know, your career and what you've done, like, you are definitely one of the hardest working people that I've ever been around and, you know, witnessed. So d if y'all don't know Nino, this dude grinds, you know, like, for real, for real. Super inspirational. Like, this dude works his ass off. And it's crazy. Like, I appreciate that. And, like, the crazy thing is, I think that if I ended up in Slaughter, like, I think I would have been complacent. Like, I'm experimental now. Like, there's nothing I won't try. There's mm -hmm. nothing I'm not doing. I don't think that you can just go, hey, this is his sound. You know what I mean? And, you know, so, you know, I think it's worked out, man. And I don't, he mentioned it just now. For y'all, if anybody hasn't heard it, Nino uh, released a song called Rhyme of the Year last year that was just stupid. And I, correct I think, me if I'm wrong, but it was kind of it was kind of a control response, right? Yeah. Yeah. Word. It was a control kind of response, but not a response. It was fucking weird. I, that I, shit was stupid. That B loves. is ridiculous. It His loves. fucking bars. On, I mean, it, it's it's ridiculous. Y'all y'all got to check that out. Nino Bless That's Rhyme of the Year. That's how got me the Jaron Benton feature. Crazy. I, I kind of think when Rhyme of the Year came out, like... Your status is as far as like maybe not amongst your peers, but amongst like fans that tune in the blogs and shit. I felt like it elevated. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was a huge. It was you a know what I'm saying? Look. Like, time, yeah. do you think that was like your key to to really? Nah. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm thinking like yeah, definitely. And I didn't think of it at the time, but yeah, definitely because how many bars is on that? It's, it's straight <laughs> through, right? It's it just is, yeah. it's straight through. I think it's a hundred. And Nestle suggested to me, "Yo, why don't you break it up? Put a hook in the middle." That's his fault. Fucking you musical did. face. He <laughs> almost. He almost. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, my bad, my bad, my bad. I mean, his fault. He almost fucked the song up. Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. Nah, but uh, yeah. I mean, I I just stood with it. I think it was a buck forty. Damn. I think yeah. it was like a buck forty eight. Even I don't know. It was long. And you know what's funny, man? It was longer. Mm. And and this shit, um, you you in Atlanta, you just shot this video this for a, a record that also is super crazy long. How how many, how long is that? It's like seven minutes. It's a seven and a half minutes. Yeah, 
Yeah. This, I, this video is gonna be so fucking crazy. We've been Hemi got the camera right now, but we've been shooting it like the past four days, and it's like there's nothing. And yo, Nestle's been money with me. My my man Rafa Jai, who's on the chorus. It, people when people see this, they're not gonna. Exp- I don't even. I can't say too much. Should I say anything, Hemi? I mean, what are you trying to say? I won't tell, say just tell, tell them what it's called, where they can find it. It's called, it's it's called This drop. Song Might Get Me Killed, man. And it's like this video, it's like... Just don't say nothing. Just drop uh, it. Man, just I drop can't it. describe it. Like, the title the, speaks the, the volumes. The concept, the effects, the shit we've been doing, the, you know, just like... Let's just say this. I was in a harness for five hours mm. <laughs> um, in a crazy fucking room wrapping myself with yarn and going crazy, pulling my hair out. And, you know, we, we rented out this nice piece of land and, and shot there for like, we were there for like seven to eight hours all mm. night, you know, lighting fires and shit. Like, wait till people see what it is, man. Like, I, I and you know what's crazy? It's like, this is going to take me to a whole nother level because visually, you know what I mean? It's going to mm-hmm. put me out there. But like, when Hemi first brought the idea to me, shout out to Hemi. Yeah. When he first brought the idea to me, I was like, I'm not doing this shit. Like, I looked at it, read the treatment. I was like, what the fuck? I, I, can't, I don't want to hang. And there's all this crazy shit that he was talking about. And but it's worked. crazy now, right? Uh, four days, of, the last four days of it, you know, it's impacted my life. And it just made me hungry. Like, I can't wait to go home and work on more music. True. And do more videos. I want to get into something, Nino. What up? Um, To kind of tie it in with what we do here at Rap Grid, you know what I'm saying? Like, every battle rapper in the history of battle rap knows you. And it's like, yo, I was going through this, but Nino told me, he showed me the lyrical light, and I decided to go this way with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you know every nigga that ever decided to try to battle and shit? PH, Pumpkinhead. I've known, the first rapper I ever met in my life was Pumpkinhead. Mm. So, like, you know, and then if somebody just, he'll put me on three-way with rappers, and he'll just be like, and then that guy would just be like, yo, give me Nino's number. And then it just kept staying like that. And then uh, me and Pat Stay became friends. And then he'll tell him, yeah, like my man Nino said. And then I'm talking to the other rappers. And it's kind of just like that, you know what I mean? But we spoke a couple times about you jumping in a battle. Yeah. Is that something you still want to do? And those that you and pr- those that, you got, you got a camera and shit? You got no, just keep going. Okay. Keep going. Those that, and those that uh, know Nino, uh, know his music, I think would definitely say that you would be a serious problem in the right. battle rap shit. You know what I mean? So who's right. some of the names that you would think about looking at? Uh, I spoke to Chilla about battling. We talked about it. Uh, I think that would be kind of interesting. Il Mac and I spoke about it. But uh, outside of that, man, I don't know. Like, I, I definitely want to build my music shit up first, and then see if you know, fuck around and battle an artist out there. But yeah, I would probably jump in. It just gotta be like the chicken. You know what I mean? It's gotta be the right amount of. <laughs> it's gotta be the right amount of chicken. The 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 right amount of eggs hatching in the kitchen in the <laughs> chicken. All of that. All that shit gotta make sense to me. And I do it for the culture, because I want chicken. <laughs> well, let me, from let me Chipotle ask, in about uh, thirty minutes. Yeah, l- l- let me let me ask you this question, man. Like, yeah, there's a lot of rapidy rappers who jump into battle rap, and people are like, oh, he's lyrical. I know you could do it. Like, <laughs> do that again. I'm playing. Oh, you lyrical. <laughs> I'm you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you how do you prevent yourself from getting caught into like lyrical? I'm rapping on a song in the middle of the battle. I hit you with the gavel and hit you up your shadow. In a battle or like, on a like, record? In a battle. Like, 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 how do you put yourself in a different mind state from lyrics on a track to lyrics in a battle? I mean, the best person... No, we're going to gonna do the battle, the the industry artist that wants to battle rap guide for dummies on how to actually jump in a battle. Oh, okay. I could, I could be perfect. Yeah, I've yes. suggested this to these guys and they fail. They don't listen. <laughs> I think you just need to study and obsess over the culture. Like, you need to just study everything, the best the best ones doing it, the best things that relate to you. Because you could watch Hollow, every Hollow battle, a hundred times. You're not going to do what Hollow does. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference. There's, you know, his whole mechanism, his whole mindset is just completely different. You know what I mean? He probably on stimulants you don't use or some shit. I don't know what he does <laughs> with his life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh. You can watch Disaster. You're not going to be Disaster. I mean, Disaster's been through so many battles. Hollow's been through so many battles that probably aren't even on fucking YouTube that we don't know what he and the situations he's been in, been through, you know? So to me, it's just looking at all of that, somehow making it relate to you, and then your writing process cannot be how you work on songs. It just can't, like, you know what I mean? And then um, my, my opinion is I think guys try to focus on their style and influence in a crowd that is usually there for them. So when they're on stage kicking a cappella, they like, oh, I know what works. But it works on a tour. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's that kind of like what hurt Joe. Joe was there, <laughs> and uh, when the crowd wasn't giving him the response, he was very uncomfortable. He I think he's know. a perfect example. Yeah, he did not know how to react because every Joe Budden show, when does that happen? When does he say a punchline and people are like, no, nah, you know, he was like, y'all, y'all not reacting to the hearts. Like, he got so uncomfortable. And I think, like, for artists, you just got to step in and prepare to be comfortable in the uncomfortable, as Conor McGregor says. And you also got to prepare for the worst as well. That, like, was a, that was a beautiful, beautiful drop right there. But yeah. continue. You got to be comfortable <laughs> in the uncomfortable. And then you also got to prepare for the worst. And you also got to put yourself in a situation like, this might not work. You know, this may not happen. And one of the best people that does that, I don't want to steal another his tips, is Pat Stay. Every time I speak to Pat and he's going over his bars and he's telling me what he wants to do, he go, now that might not go over well. If it doesn't, I'm going to go. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he has little options. You know what I mean? So it's like you just got to be cerebral with it. And you can't just stick to you can't just stick to like one particular mindset at all. Like you got to prepare for different things. Like, look, Il Mac had this. He, I, me and Il Mac talk. We're friends. He had this whole idea about, like, going to Smack before the battle. Smack didn't show up. You know what I mean? He had a whole idea how to approach Smack. You know, I'm going to, you know, this counts, right? But mm-hmm. it ended up happening. Then then you got... But um, he had but he had backup plan. Of course. And he was able to get off his round. since he was yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. 11 teen. You know what I mean? He's been mm-hmm. doing this shit since he was a kid. And 11 then you teen is a, crazy. Yeah, and he's been winning battles since before he could graduate high school. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So he knows what it is. And another thing is, but look at this. He still didn't prepare for the daylight situation. You can't. He's been through, he was like, yo, I hosted a battle, Nino, where a kid pissed on himself on purpose. I remember that, yeah. And kept fucking rapping. But I'd never seen the shit I seen when Daylight just, you know, I didn't even, you know. Mm-hmm. So he's in that. He's in there, and he's got great material. And it didn't, So it's like, to me, if you're stepping in there, you know you're going to be last. You're the industry. You got to prepare for anything. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, and just go, this may work, this may not work, and just be comfortable with yourself. So I think a lot of guys, they go wrong just thinking that the shit that they normally do is going to work. So, Nino, any words? We got some big shit coming out on Rap Grid. You know what I'm saying? We're working on some different little shows and programs. We're trying to bring y'all that we're going to wrap up. Any words that you want the fans to know before this video comes out or as this interview comes out? Nah, man. Just follow me, Look man. out for that video. Yeah, real shit. Like Sonny said, look out for the video. And I mean, I got more material. Drop. Illuminati Reject, 11-11. That drops. Mm-hmm. Um, this video should be dropping in a couple weeks. Um, and then, you know... On Facebook, Nino Bless Music, Twitter, at Nino Bless, and you know what I mean? Follow me. Chit! You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And check out that rhyme of the year, too. It's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh, uh huh. Outro suck. Chit! <laughs> <laughs> Rapgridradio.com. Let's get it.